Welcome everybody to the next episode of the Cannabis Review. We're going to be talking all things copywriting and why it's important in the cannabis industry. And to do that, we are joined by an expert in copywriting, Dave Barton. He's the founder and copy chief at Thermidor. How are you keeping, Dave? I'm all right. Thanks, so. Owen. Uh, you know, Friday afternoon here in the UK. It's nice and sunny. Um, but yeah, this, it's always uh, great when you're indoors on a lovely sunny day. You can, uh, <laughs> it makes no difference to me. But no, all good. Thank you, sir. It's good to see you in Berlin where we caught up recently. Yes, mate. Very good to see you. It was a great festival put on by Alex and the guys. Uh, we might jump onto the festival stuff towards the end of the episode. But for now, do you maybe want to give everybody an overview of how you got into the cannabis industry, how you came to set up Termidor and the objectives of Termidor? Sure. Well, we call ourselves a sort of content-led creative agency. So I've been a copywriter for ooh, more years than I care to remember, probably more like sort of 17. Um, started out in sort of B2B PR. Um, my background is very much kind of arts and writing and drama and things like that. But in terms of finding a way into writing as a career, it all became like, oh, well, you know, what is this PR thing? You know, I found myself working for an agency doing lots of uh, writing around obscure things like uh, construction equipment and uh, work with other agencies and everything from, like, you know, engineering works to uh, uh, energy efficient LEDs. So really sort of sexy stuff. All oh, food service. Mustn't forget that. That's mercenary if you ever get the chance. Uh, <laughs> But for me, it was always, okay, so there's a business objective, lots of technical jargon, and how do we kind of find the story thread through that? So that's something that's been consistent throughout my career. I set up as a freelancer, freelance copywriter about five years ago. Um, still have a business doing sort of tech writing and things like that. But about a year, year and a half ago, I started to see just more and more stuff happening in the cannabis sector, um, something that I've always been interested in anyway. And it was really an opportunity to take that sort of skill set from you know writing about complex or stigmatized things and trying to find human stories or find you know ways about you know what does this mean or you know how are things operating and the more you kind of get into the cannabis sector the more you find that you have to kind of do some sort of advocacy to kind of raise the industry uh, for everyone so that's kind of what we're trying to do we're trying to work with more and more companies to help tell those stories we're doing some work with the uh, cic here in the uk the cannabis industry council um, telling everything from blogs, helping with websites, um, social media. And we're doing our own podcast as well, The Lobster Pot. And um, just trying to get different perspectives from people all over the world on what's happening in their niche, whether it be the niche being a country or a particular part of the industry, and just trying to find those stories. So that's kind of what we're about, Thermidor. Um, yeah, so that's copywriting is very much a core part of that. And um, like I say, content driven creativity, and that really stems back to words more than anything else for me. Yeah, it's a great uh, amount of con or knowledge to have behind the topic that we're talking about today, because it's the one thing I start to notice is that for as the industry advances and gets more mature, the level of, uh, let's say, content or intellect in the content needs to start upgrading towards the likes of sportswear brands or retail brands that are, are putting the amount of effort yeah, into the that is yeah. sorry I was gonna say I think it's definitely a symptom of that. I think absolutely the more interest there is the more you need to kind of stand out the more you need to kind of communicate. And I think there's still a big education piece in cannabis as well. That's what I see I mean it's very different from technology in many respects but Whereas in tech, you have kind of like taking smart people's ideas and kind of making them palatable to a business audience. Here, you know, there's that stigma times 10, you know. We're talking about something that people, a lot of people regard as, you know, bad drugs, you know, and things like that. Or, you know, and then you've got other people saying, well, actually, it's medicine. You're like, well, how can the same thing be? Okay, drugs, medicine. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of stigmas to overcome and a lot of different ways that, you know, people engage with cannabis. And I think, you know, there's that sort of job to be done. But it, lots of people I speak to always have a very touching often personal story about why cannabis matters to them, how it's improved their lives or the lives of a loved one. And I think that's, you know, it's hearing those stories and helping, that's the anecdotal evidence that helps to educate people. And I think that's what content is really good at doing. Yeah. And this is basically the first topic I wanted to talk about now for entrepreneurs getting into this industry or looking to set up their own business. First and foremost, start off with everybody. What is copywriting and why is it important for a brand, regardless of whether it's cannabis or not? Well, I, copywriting essentially is, you know, the written word and marketing. So, I mean, you have, you know, people who write ads for TV, might write scripts. I mean, for me, I guess more and more over the last sort of, well, in my career, I sort of 
got into it at a time when there was an opportunity, you know, there was more and more digital communications. And as you start to see things like websites and blogs, people using content marketing to differentiate their brand, to really, you know, differentiate, you know, their kind of tone of voice to kind of stand out. And then there's a whole industry around SEO. I mean, I wouldn't get into that. But again, it's like trying to increase your presence online as a brand, using content as a way to establish your expertise, your tone of voice, how you want to engage with your customers. And I think you always have to have that customer in mind. Who's going to read your content? How are they going to find it useful? And those are a lot of questions I think we try to ask our clients and people we work with. You know, it's not just about writing, you know, something for your website. It's thinking about, you know, who are your customers? Why are they going to find this interesting? What value does this deliver? It's not about, you know, our website, we do this, this is great. You know, we do all these wonderful things as a company. You know, we sell you know, zebras to, you know, and things. Okay, well, that, that's fine. But what, what's the point? Why do people want to buy zebras? What's important about the zebra industry? I'm just, you know, being facetious. Um, but again, it's that whole thing. It's like, who are you talking to? Why is what you can do a, a solution to their problem? And there's so many different ways you can kind of spin that, you know, whether it be through web content. And there's so many different ways that, you know, that becomes relevant through different channels. I mean, you know, talk about social media, as well as websites, as well as, you know, through, I guess, conventional media as well. I mean, so much of it's online and there's so many opportunities to use content to your advantage that any business that isn't is really missing a trick, really. Um, and I think they say in B2B, something like you need seven different brand engagements for someone to start buying your product. I mean, it's different from, you know, if you're selling a chocolate bar or something like that. But if you're selling something like a piece of technology, for example, people are going to need to know that they could, you know, you know what you're talking about, that they're buying into something that is interesting and will actually help them, you know, do everything from, you know, save them money or increase their efficiency, all those sorts of things. And, you know, that is what is at the heart of content. And similar, and same with cannabis as well. You know, I guess if you uh, in the kind of B2B environment, if you're selling a piece of machinery or something like that, you need to not only talk about its features and benefits, but, you know, what's the impact you're going to have for your customer? Is it going to, you know, make them more money? Is it going to help them improve efficiencies and put more, you know, pre-rolls through per hour or whatever it might be? So and those not necessarily the interesting things. The interesting thing is that, you know, the impact something like that will have. And that's where the story aspect comes in. So there's a lot of elements I see caught up in it. I mean, you know, it's like journalism, but it's more of a kind of slant towards you know, selling stuff. And you've got to be as authentic as you can in order to be thought of as credible. And I think that's a big part of, well, it's important for any business to be thought of as credible. And I think content, particularly in the cannabis industry, where you've got so many restrictions around advertising and marketing and things like that, using content to actually tell those anecdotal stories can be a very powerful thing. Incredible, yes. So do you see over in North America any agencies that seem to be excelling at this or is is there a massive limit on what the the agencies can currently do on the market or uh, what do you see so far? I mean, it's not something I'm, I'm hugely you know, aware of what's happening in the US in terms of their restrictions, but you look at you know the way in which, for example, in Canada, sort of companies you know cannabis companies you know you can't have a kind of big fancy kind of uh packaging on the shelves you know you need to have you know you have to have that big kind of uh it has to be sort of black it has to have a big yellow thc sticker on or something like that so that you know how do you build a brand with those sort of restrictions when you can't go on instagram for example you can't sort of an openly advertise on facebook how do you navigate those sort of restrictions and i think that's something that a lot of cannabis brands in well in north america and and beyond you know if you're trying to build something you're in danger of being basically shut down from you know to, to a large part of your audience so that puts pressure on needing to use other channels to you know demonstrate what your brand's about or you know and i think again trying to substantiate kind of health claims and things like that well that you know that's a whole different kettle of fish but if you're talking about that you just need to be very mindful and i think again if you can tell stories around it and use that kind of anecdotal rather than cast iron evidence that, that you know and again there's there's problems around research and things like that how can you demonstrate statistics or demonstrate that something has a specific impact when you you know when there's no research happening or i mean i'm, I'm just kind of speculating to a large extent here i'm no expert in that side of things but for me it comes back to even if you kind of think about the wider perspective on those sorts of restrictions from a marketing perspective 
you know you can still do more with content than you can in you know written content you know as a kind of share of voice uh play than using something visual and putting on a social media post and sort of you know because you know I, again i think you really when you think about the broader perspective of uh, a brand or marketing and things like that it's you know it's about that full impact it's the full spectrum you know i think there's a lot of parallels in the in so many different sectors and I, I always love how cannabis seems to be you know 15 different sectors just coming together and just clashing together and you know there's a little bit of oh is it can we advertise it in the same way as we can pharma or is it like uh, alcoholic beverages or is it like fast moving consumer goods or is it you know is it medicine there's so many kind of thing you know ways in which people understand it or don't understand it and i think it's just about you know reassuring your customers whatever it is whether you're selling flower oils or you know vaping devices or something like that there has to be a way to illustrate that or differentiate your brand and i think through content you know i'm you know i'm an advocate for it i think i just think there are so many ways to leverage it don't know if that answers the question but it gave it gave me a, a sense of feeling like i know what i'm talking about so, uh, yes, I know. It indeed, for sure. And I actually it incorporated what I wanted to move on to is how to build a brand in cannabis. And as you said, con uh, copywriting is an essential part of your brand building. But we start to see over in uh, America, especially the West Coast, seem to have a lot of golf events, uh, Lemon Haze of their events. And uh, I've started yeah, to hear yeah. already about New York, um, where the like the rooftop cannabis parties, uh, sample yeah. parties are already starting to happen. So do you see uh, uh, when it happens in the UK a, a mix of events like this, or do you always think the written word is going to outdo any in-person event that can be held? I, you know, I think you need that. You you, you need a kind of uh, just broader approach as possible. I think you know one of the things that I'm always constantly thinking about is you know where's the kind of there, there needs to be some creativity in what you're doing, and I think having restrictions sometimes can really help to focus how you. Something. And I think that's how you can be creative in marketing. Sometimes it comes from having those restrictions. Here in the UK, I think because we have, you know, a medical market, you know, it, it feels a long way from having a recreational market. There's still that kind of, like I say, the stigmas to overcome to convince people that this is medicine. You know, people will, will have cannabis, you know, recreationally, illegally. That that's something that's going to happen regardless. But what, in order to kind of give it more legitimacy. We need to be able to demonstrate to to patients or potential patients as well as doctors that this is medicine and that there are different ways to you know we need to have that education piece and i think again content is perfect for that education piece and i think that's the kind of first piece of the puzzle we need to address over here and i think you know organizations like the mccs uh, professor mike barnes hannah deacon doing making great strides in doing that they're going around the uk and uh, talking to doctors directly I and mean, we've been to one of their events and you know they're giving these really intelligent doctors cannabis 101 not because they you know it's not talking down to them it's because there's the knowledge just isn't there so you know telling stories is about you know understand you know i think the work of you know organizations like plea you know getting people out there you know it's still storytelling it's the same thing you know whether it's you know written content in-person events you know you need to have those stories heard and i think that's the important thing and i think that's something all kinds of brands can have a you know have a hand in and you know like i say i feel like every company that engages in the, in the sector almost has to do that advocacy piece and that those storytelling aspects is is a key part of that so i think it's it's one of the same thing events written content social media it's all part of the same effort and you know there's that story aspect that has to come through and i think it's how do we tell those stories how do we manifest them and what are we up against how in what again we have the different contexts in which we can do that and that varies depending on the, on the country but yeah that's kind of what's at the cross we need everything basically i think super stuff this has been a very informative episode so far before we finish up with the time we've got um the election over the uk who's gonna win it and who's gonna legalize cannabis is it gonna be oh, the first, gosh. First lady or the sooner fella i don't know i mean you know personally i mean i think we need a we need a change at the top for anything meaningful to happen from a cannabis perspective but you know politicians are in my opinion <laughs> You never know what's going to happen next. So, you know, maybe the Tory party will come along and say, all right, we need to kind of, you know, get the economy back on track. Let's legalize cannabis. 
recreationally. Let's tax it and let, let's let's make a load of money from it. Hopefully that's, that's what ends up happening. Um, mm -hmm. For everybody who wants Maybe to check way. out more of Dave's work, the website is below. I highly recommend checking out their podcast as well. It is very, very good indeed. Dave, thank you very much for taking the time to chat on this episode and hopefully we get to talk again in the near future. Very good. Thank you, Owen. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, take care. Until next episode, everybody. Oh.